My name is Thea Sveder and this is my champion story. I'm from Oslo, Norway. I come from a very small family. I only have one little sister and one cousin. Two have cousins and that's it. So I come from a very small family. I grew up around sports in the sense that my mom used to play handball, which is a big sport in Europe, and my dad was playing soccer and is still playing soccer. Um, but I ended up starting gymnastics when I was very little and I did some dancing. And I found out that those were not really my kind of sport because I'm not a good mover. Um, but I, one day I went to see my friends play volleyball and I thought it looked really fun. This was probably in seventh grade. So I went to watch a practice and their coach, he asked me if I wanted to come down on the court and just play with them right away. And I had no gear, no nothing, just in my socks. And that was my first time playing volleyball and I had so much fun. And that's how I started playing volleyball. From there, it kind of went gradually. I was fortunate to start playing with the older girls as I improved pretty fast. So this was in seventh grade. Um, I played probably like two, three days from when I first started to play volleyball. And then when it came to me starting high school, I wanted to go to a high school where they offered uh, my sport as well as academics. So in high school I played uh, for a school that was like 30 minutes away from where I live. It was in the capital so it was just a bus right away. So that program ended up being shut down after one year of me being there. And in Norway we have three years of high school. So I went there my first year and then I ended up being recruited for the national team, the junior national team. And there was this one school, which is called Top Valley Norway, where the national team coaches are, like that's where they coach. And a lot of national team players go there and study there. So that's where I wanted to go. Um, I committed there. And for my second and third year of high school, um, I went there. So then I committed to this high school called Top Valley Norway. It's an all volleyball school, so it's only for volleyball students. And I think the whole school has 70 people max. It has only three grades, so it's one class per grade. And it was a very tiny and intimate school. It was six hours drive from home. So I had to move out when I was 17 to go to that school. And I lived in the dorms over there. We had like a girl's floor and a guy's floor. Um, but it was a good time in the sense that all your friends were there. The school was literally next door and the gym was next door. So it was a very um, separated spot. It was very um, away from everything. So when I, for me to go to the school, uh, I would have to fly from my city into a different city would be like an hour and then I would have to take a two-hour boat ride to get to my school so it was very separated in the sense that we could not go out and go party or we could not have like fun on the weekends I think the maximum amount of people live there is like 3,000 people but it's a it was a really good spot for a young athlete to really focus and lock in and uh, focus on sport and school. So I went there for two years. I think my day would be look like something. Um, I would go to either weights or volleyball practice in the morning. Then I would go straight to the dorm shower and then run to class and I would be at school for like four or five hours and then I would go straight to practice again. So I think from like 17 to 19 years old I had a regular 
practice week of like 20 to 30 hours. So that just became the standard. And yeah, so a regular like practice week for me was like 20 to 30 hours. Um, I would say like normally like 25 hours and then you would go do extra work on the side. My coach was foreign, so she was really strict um, compared to the other Norwegian coaches. I really learned a lot from her in, in the sense of like being disciplined, not taking things for granted, but she also like punished us a lot. But this was like one of the coaches that you just had to put up a filter and take in the constructive feedback and just block out everything else. If not, like she would mentally destroy you. So I think just putting up this wall and learning this from an early age really helped me improving as an athlete and really having the drive that I had. Um, so, so my first year there, um, or my two fir first two years of high school, it was more so like the junior national team. And my last year of high school, I was recruited for the senior national team and it was really cool. Uh, I was really happy about it. We went to Azerbaijan in Asia. Um, I think it was for a European qualification in, to go into the world qualifications. And it was a really good experience. I think volleyball has taken me through so many different countries so far. Like even in Europe, just traveling from like 15 to 19, like I think, I went to probably like 10, 12 countries um, just by playing volleyball because we played a lot abroad, we played tournaments abroad and then it was a lot of national team games. Um, so that was really cool being able to be a part of that and just represent my country. It was a big honor. Um, in my last year, so this school, it's very, like they focus on either having you go professional right after high school or to be recruited and play at a college or university in the United States. So this school really focused on trying to either have you to go professional right away and play somewhere in Europe right after high school, or they want to try to help scholarship to play somewhere in the U.S. So. I didn't feel like I was ready to be done with school and I also knew that if I got a scholarship I would get a degree for free. So I kind of wanted to go the route and go to the US to start with. Also because if you first play a professional you can't go the other way, like you can't then try to get a scholarship because you can't be under NCAA if you already made money as a professional. So that's kind of also why I chose that route. Um, so I always wanted to go play in the U.S., but at the same time, I was very unsure if that would be the right thing for me. I was always very insecure, and I didn't know if I would be confident enough or be brave enough to actually like follow through with it and just move across the whole world to live by myself and play volleyball. So I decided to take the SAT test. like literally right before the deadline that I could sign up because I wasn't sure. I think the one thing that actually made me like, okay, I want to do this was because I, I share that I, I kind of was thinking about this to a lot of people, a lot of elderly people. And they, everyone kept telling me that they wish they could go back in time and switch that one decision they did or that they wish that this one person that had an impact on their decision wouldn't be there so they could make a different choice. So I felt I got really impacted by this and I thought that like whether I'm like insecure or not confident enough like I don't want to look back four years and I could have done it but I didn't do it. So that was like the main reason where I decided to sign up for the SAT like see how it goes, at least I would have the test results. And then after that, I could have decided whether I still wanted to go or not. And I, there was a chance that I wouldn't get any offers too. So 
I went, did the SAT, and it, it was probably the hardest test of my life because it was in my second language, but it was fine. And then I started to talk to college coaches. I ended up with five different offers, and I ended up at UNLV in Vegas um, for a few reasons. Like, it ended up being between like this school in Vegas or some schools in New York. But ultimately, I ended up deciding on UNLV. So in August 2017, I flew over here with my family. And they kind of dropped me off. And then they flew back home to Norway. Um, then I was here all alone with a brand new team. Had to speak my second language the whole time was super intimidated. I had the biggest culture shock ever. And I think my first year was pretty hard in the sense that I had to adapt a lot and I had to fear or face a lot of adversity. But it made me grow a lot as a person. And also me moving out at 17, I think that helped because I was already pretty independent. So. I didn't always have to have someone around me, like I didn't mind being on my own. Um, but yeah, my first year was very interesting. I was very new to this culture, like in Norway, everyone is very reserved. Like you don't go talk to people on the street. You try to not sit next to people on the bus. Like you literally try to avoid people. Um, so coming here to Vegas and having everyone, people on the street telling me their life story, it was really interesting, but also very annoying until I realized that maybe it's a good thing. Um, but yeah, and also the girls on my team, like I came a month after the other girls. Um, and it was me and another girl that came in. We were both four and she was from Bulgaria. There was already a French girl there. So me having those other two foreigners on the team really helped me in the sense that I had someone to relate to or they could relate to me. Because I could not always relate to the Americans and how they were feeling and how they were handling things. Um, because I think that me moving across the whole world and doing all of that stuff, I think that made me grow up a little bit faster than most people. So I think my maturity level was a little bit higher than the same people at my age. Um, but yeah, so I thought when I first came to college and when I first had a new team, um, I thought they would like help me, like introduce me to people at the school other athletes but it wasn't like that at all I had to figure a lot of stuff out on my own which again made me learn a lot about myself it was fine um, yeah so I grew a lot that first year realized a lot we ended literally like straight bottom in our conference lost every game season was horrible I had barely any fun um, our coaches was, they were fine, but they ended up getting fired after my freshman year. Sophomore year, we got a full, like, new coaching staff, and it literally changed us. We ended up, like, rock bottom, like, 11th place my first year. Second year, we ended up fifth. Third year, we ended up third. And then last year, in my senior year, we ended up undefeated in conference and we went to the NCAA championship. So that was a lot of fun. Um, got to experience that. The sad part is that it was during COVID. So when our season normally starts in September, it had to be pushed back um, a semester or half a year for us to actually be able to play it because there was a lot of sickness and things were not working out how they should have been. Like, I think COVID, other than my freshman year being a little rough, I think COVID 
was very hard for me as an athlete. Um, first and foremost, like I was on the other side of the world, like away from my family. I ended up having to go home. If not, I would have been stuck in the U.S. So I went home. I was stuck at home for four months, um, which was fine because it wasn't as strict. The rules were not as strict in Norway because we didn't have as much like COVID spread. Um, but I had a problem, which was like our season was supposed to start in September and then I was not able to get back into the country because they didn't allow, didn't allow students to come back because it was unnecessary travel at that point. Um, but I ended up being able to travel back like late July. And when I came back, I had to sit in a two week travel quarantine. And when I had two days left on my travel quarantine, my whole team made a bad move. They went to a party and 11 girls ended up with COVID which was very sad for me because I was so ready to start playing again and I've been sitting home alone for two weeks with no one around me and I was so ready to play and then I had no one to play with and our season ended up being like pushed back like a few weeks and then it just uh, was pushed back a whole semester which ended up being fine like when I look back at it now like time really flew it went so fast but it ended up being really hard for me because I isolated myself so much because I was one of three or four girls that did not have COVID. So I was always very afraid of getting it at an inconvenient time and jeopardizing our season and like my team, my team's health. Even though most of those girls, they didn't even care because they already had it. So I was a lot alone that year. So that was pretty hard. Um, but once we started to play again, it was fine. We just had to wear masks that sometimes during practice, mostly during travel. And we also got tested three times a week. So that was a very interesting time. But we ended up getting being undefeated. I actually played one game with COVID um, in Utah. I tested positive and then we had to cancel our second game. And, I was driven home in a rental car and the other one followed behind in a bus because I got COVID. So that was an inconvenient time, but um, yeah. Again, we ended up undefeated. We got our championship rings and then we went to NCAAs. After that, I was done. That was my last year playing volleyball. Um, I'd played for 12 years at that point, 12, 13 years since seventh grade until like last year of college. And it was just all of a sudden it was just done. Like I didn't have anyone to play with. Like I didn't have more, I actually had one more year of eligibility just because of COVID because everyone got this extra COVID year, but I didn't take it because my coach didn't have a scholarship for me, so I decided not to play. So I thought like I would just never play competitive volleyball again. Um, but as an international student, as a foreign student, you get one year to work after you graduate from college. So I went on to try to find a job as a normal person. I'd never had a job in my life other than playing volleyball. Um, so right after college, I decided that I wanted to like use my knowledge as a volleyball player and from my degree, which was kinesiology. So I wanted to be a personal trainer and help or use my knowledge and my experience to help other people in the same situation. So like other athletes, but also like other people, because I've had a lot of like rehab classes and preventative stuff. So I went on to take the hardest exam, which is the um, Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist exam. I luckily passed it and then I applied for jobs and I decided to work as the personal trainer at Lifetime Fitness. 
And I did that for a year. Again, I barely played in the volleyball, so that transition was really hard in the sense that something that you do like every day for 12, 13 years, like the one thing that consumes you so much is just done. And that transition, it was really hard having that like post-athlete depression because you don't really know what to do with yourself. Like for me, my coach literally planned every single hour of my day. And I would always look at my calendar to see what I was going to do the, the next day. Everything was like laid out for me. Everyone told me what to do all the times. Like we had uh, strength and conditioning coaches telling me exactly what to lift or what weight to lift at. So that was really hard after in the fact that, okay, everything that I do or want to do, like I have to plan it myself or it's up to me. Like if I don't decide to do something like it's not going to be done or so that was interesting but I figured it out I play a little bit club outside of um, work but I worked as a personal trainer for a year I think that was probably the best first job I could have ever had um, in the sense that I was able to be in the gym the whole day so it was very familiar I was able to use my knowledge and um, something that I like to do and help other people so I really enjoyed it I had a very wide range of different types of clients from young old athlete post-surgery um, but I really enjoyed my time with all of them and how I could help them but also what they all taught me um, yeah, and the fact that I was able to work out in my break every day, I was, I was the life. Um, yeah, so I, I got to work as a personal trainer for a year and I really, really enjoyed it. And I realized that's something that I'm really like passionate about. Um, unfortunately, I had to quit my job because I only had a year to work as a foreigner, which really, really sucked but it is it was what it was and i decided to start my masters so i could stay and just just expand my knowledge and learn more and eventually be able to help more people so right now i am doing my kinesiology masters i'm in my first semester and i decided to take my last and final covid volleyball year so I'm again playing volleyball after I had a full year off with a lot of sickness and injuries. Um, so that, that's been kind of hard returning back to that and realizing that I am playing right now, but I won't be in the same shape or the peak that I was in when I played like a year ago. Um, but I'm in it, I'm still playing. I'm still in school and after a month or in a month then I'll be totally done with volleyball then I don't have any more eligibility and then it's just going to be school but what I ultimately want to do is start my own fitness business. Um, I haven't thought of specifics because it's hard as a foreigner to do anything in this country if you don't have like solid papers but I'm really interested in starting my online fitness business where I can just reach a lot of people and help a lot of people but also have an in-person part of it as well but I don't know if that is going to be like eventually having my own gym or just training athletes or just training a certain population but I know that I want to help as many people as possible and using the knowledge that I have and that I'm still acquiring um, to benefit other people. Um, you mentioned your insecurities and you brought up just kind of growing up and playing volleyball you just kind of felt like you were too skinny um, so can you tell us about 
w how that drove you to where you are now and to kind of push past those insecurities. Yeah. So when I was little, I was really skinny. Like I was growing tall. I, w I was taller than most boys. Like now I'm 5'10", but like I was like this. I was skinny. And there were some guys I used to pick on it. It didn't really affect me too much, but I, I just felt like I was like really skinny and I was eating a lot. Like from like very young, I was eating more than my dad like every day. But I think it was when I started playing volleyball that when I started to lift weights along with playing volleyball just to prevent injuries mostly, I really found that I really enjoyed lifting weights, trying to challenge my body, lift heavy, but also like seeing the muscle mass on my body increase. And I think since then, me starting, there was probably like first year of high school that I really started like getting into strength training. Um, so I think that started because I was so skinny, but also because I was getting into like more serious volleyball. And I like started to see the gains very fast. And from then it just kind of went gradually. I, my second year of high school was when like I had those 20, 30 hour weeks of volleyball, but also of lifting. But I remember I was lifting very heavy almost every time I lifted throughout the whole high school. So I think like I was able to do 11 pull-ups when I was done in high school. I squatted 245 and I did dips with a 45 pound plate. And I think just being able to do this, which was way heavier than most of the girls that I worked out with. So I think that gave me a lot of confidence. Also, even though my high school was very driven towards like getting results and pushing people to be good at volleyball, a lot of the girls, they were not as like driven and they didn't really enjoy weights as I did. So from like second year of high school, I mainly lifted with the boys, like, all the time. I think it was really fun. I felt like I fed off their testosterone, <laughs> but I knew I would always have someone that would spot me, that would help me. Um, and they were lifting really heavy, so I would always try to like, try to match them. And I did lift heavier than some of the guys, but I think just having that competition and that masculine, energy around me really helped me getting like into heavy weights and me feeling just powerful and strong with having more muscles I helped me gain a lot of confidence and now like in college or since then like I'm still I'm still lean some people would probably call me skinny some would probably say that I'm pretty muscular but now I really enjoy the fact that, okay, people probably can't look at me and see that I can do 12 pull-ups or I can deadlift this much or I can do this or I can do that. And I think that people underestimating me and me surprising them is something that I really enjoy and is one of the factors why I'm still like really enjoying lifting and lifting heavy and was able to gain a lot of confidence. Um, I have two, so one will kind of follow this, but being a strong woman in just kind of athletics and life, um, what, is, what does that mean to you? That's a good question. It stumped me when he asked That's it. That's a good question. Being a strong woman, do you mean like physically or mentally? I think bo both. You talk about your, the lifting, you know, you wanted to go lift with the guys. I think that's awesome. Yeah. You, but then also kind of in life, you talked about 
moving to a completely different country. Yeah. And I kind of see your mentality in sports that kind of kept you that shows your strength in coming to another country, knowing absolutely nobody. Yeah. Um, so kind of just, I don't know, being a strong woman, what does it mean to you in your own words? I think being a strong woman to me means that you're really, you are really confident in yourself or have grown to be confident in yourself and stop to care what other people think about you or the things that you do. Like, me wanting to lift really heavy or look a certain way doesn't have to make sense to any other, any other one than me. Um, even like me doing something, like I remember in college, like my neck was hurting and I would have cup marks on my neck because that's what my athletic trainer put on. Sometimes it would look like I had hickeys. I didn't care because I knew that those were cup marks, not hickeys. So I think like small things like that just knowing yourself, knowing what's actually real for you and not caring what other people think or like the assumptions they, they will make about you. Um, and if there's any little girl out there watching this who plays any sport, who has any passion for anything, what's something you would want to tell her or any advice for her? Um, I would say there's a lot of things that I can say but I would probably say do it for you like I was really fortunate with the fact that my family always supported me in everything that I wanted to do because it was my life and I had friends that weren't able to do the things that they wanted to do because their family held them back so I think do it for you if you want to do it do it if you think about, like, if you think too much about what other people think, they really don't matter because those people are not gonna, like, in five years, they're probably not gonna be a part of your life. So don't think about what they think. Just do what you wanna do in the moment because that's what you wanna do. Don't let anyone, like, prevent you from doing that, whether that's a sport, a hobby, or whatever. You got more? Yeah. What was a time throughout your career, personal life, anything that you were the most proud of yourself? And then what is the biggest highlight right now that you can think of, of your sporting career? So I feel like, so this is a hard question for me because what I realized is that throughout my time as an athlete, I've never given myself enough credit which I think a lot of athletes can like relate to. I've never given myself enough credit for all the things that I've done. Like all the things that I put my body through, pushed through, l like records or um, things that are bro broken, things that I've had to do. Just, I don't think I've ever given myself enough credit. Like, like I would excuse that I was on the national team with like, yeah, but Norway is not a good team, so whatever but like so f moments that I've been most proud of I think something that stood out to me when I think about it now is that the fact that I came across the whole world I came from Norway to the US and like face all of the adversity and all the things I had to go through my first years, but also having sec uh, English as my second language and be able to two years in a row be the academic champion of my team, which means that I've had the best grades over like all the athletes on my team, like all the girls on my team. Uh, sometimes I would be the only foreigner and like I would have the best grades even though everything would be my second language. And I think that's something that I'm really proud of because I've always been a good student, but the fact that I was able to like do that, yeah, that made me really proud actually. And I did it twice. Even though that sounds really nerdy, like that made me oh, proud. Awesome. I was gonna ask you too when you were talking earlier, I was like, I wonder when she learned English. 
yeah. Well, luckily, like we have it from first grade to 11th grade, so we basically have 11 years of mandatory English. But when you come as a foreigner, like, I don't speak it every day, so it's very rusty, and there will be times I'm like, okay, I can't finish my sentence because I, I'm lacking this one word, and I, so it doesn't make sense, or I don't know what to say. Um, so, yeah, just school here. I just, yeah, that. And then for the sports side, I think like the biggest thing was that my team and I, we were undefeated. We won, I don't know, a lot of games. Like we didn't even lose in our conference at all. And that's probably like 20 games. So that was a very big moment for us when we were called at the NCAA selection show. But also one time for my, like personally for myself, when I played for this senior national team, we were in Azerbaijan, we played against Netherlands. I think I was 18 and like our uh, average age at the national team is very young. And the, ne ne the Netherlands, they had just ended fourth in Olympics the year before. And I came in with a goal that I wanted to block this one right side because she's like known as the best right side or diagonal in the world. And I was able to block her. I did it. It was like, went straight down, but kind of soft. But it was one of the like proudest moments in my volleyball career, I think I was just so happy because I said I was going to do it and I did it. And like she was the best at that point. And it felt really good. I almost started to cry on the court, I think. <laughs> like for me, I knew that I can compare myself to like this bodybuilder and he's a male. Like there's no comparison. So there's no reason for me to feel that I'm not good enough standing next to him. But also, so I think that's really sad that women don't dare to go certain places in the gym because there are too many males or they're too big of a male there that are intimidating. Because I have friends that they literally stick to the step master and they do the machines because they, they feel insecure about the free weight stuff because there's too many guys around it. So I think I really have the benefit of starting young, having like actually guy friends, starting lifting with them and like having gains with them. Um, but also having like that support system of them like wanting me to see me successful and just helping me. So that has translated to now, like I really couldn't care less if I'm like doing like 20 pound curls next to a guy that does 80 pound curls. But I think it's the fact that girls shy away from that because they overthink it and they think everyone is watching them when they're really not. I think that's like an insecurity issue that should be addressed. I know, I feel like there's a lot of girls, they, they just underestimate themselves. Yeah. Like even my teammates, like there was one point we started doing like pull-ups and they were like using the bands for the longest of times. Like I was already repping 10, three sets of 10, but they were like, they were using the bands, but they would never dare to take them off, regardless of like how many times we've actually done it or how many months we've done pull-ups. They never took the bands out. Like they didn't even like challenge themselves to try it. Because I know that a lot of those girls, if, I had, if they had taken them out, they would at least be able to do three. Yeah. And then they would be so surprised because they would have no idea. They could what would you say to your younger self? I would probably say that what you're doing is good. It's good enough. Because there have been times where I feel like I'm, I've not done enough or I should be doing more, I should be doing something different, even though I'm like doing way more than most people in every aspect of what I do, like school, volleyball, training, whatever. So I think I would just like maybe stress little me less I say like you're doing good like don't worry about it too much like it's not that serious it doesn't have to be perfect but 
You're doing good. What does champion mean to you? Hmm. A champion to me is someone who can face their fears and overcome their insecurities to do what they actually want to do and just go with it. See where it takes them and yeah. <laughs> okay. My name is Thea Svedet and this is my champion story. <laughs> now you say that in Norwegian. Yeah. Yeah, I had the Thea and this is my champion story. <laughs>